So if you want to become a front-end web developer, then here is a easy to follow step-by-step -step roadmap for front-end web development in 2024. So let's get started with beginning, which is the basics of front-end web development. Now, of course, when we talk about the basic, we talk about HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, HTML, hypertext, markup language, where you're going to learn the basics of the HTML tags, the divs, the paragraph tags, the anchor tags, the image tags, the H1 spans, and so forth and so on. Understanding how to structure simple web pages with semantic HTML is a must know. Learn about forms and input tags, and then move on to CSS. CSF, which stands for Cascading Style Sheets, where you can learn the basics of the syntaxes and how to style HTML elements, of course. Understanding the box model, margins, paddings, borders, and layouts, the displays, the position, the floats, flexbox, and the grid system are all in the basics of the CSS environment. Now learn about CSS selectors later on with pseudo classes, pseudo elements, and then gradually move on to JavaScript. So don't go too deep into CSS. There's a lot that you can learn. If you have your basics, you should move on to JavaScript. Also in JavaScript, just learn the basics. Learn about basic syntaxes, variables, data types, operators, understand the functions, conditionals, loops, and arrays. Learn about the document object models, the DOM, and how to manipulate it. Now for all of these, I have Great courses, check them out there in the description. Also the entire blog post, the entire roadmap will be in the video description. Next up, you should move on to responsive design and advanced CSS. This is where I told you to stop with CSS and this is where I'm telling you to continue with CSS. You need responsive design knowledge in order to be a skilled front end web developer. Learn about media queries and how to make websites responsive. Understand mobile first design principles, participate building responsive layouts using Flexbox and CSS grid system. And then after you have this covered, move on and dip your toes into CSS frameworks. Now there are two, actually there are many more, but I would recommend two CSS frameworks. First is Bootstrap, which is basically a more plug and play framework. I would recommend it for quick testing, quick prototyping. And then you have Tailwind CSS, which is the second one, which is more on a basic level and you can go into further customization with it. Now, if you want to, if you really want a challenge, then I would suggest a couple of CSS preprocessors. Now there's SAS and less. The syntaxes differ. I would rec I like SAS more. I also have a great course on SAS. SAS is basically where these frameworks are built. So if you want to build your own CSS framework, which I also do in the course, then go with SAS. Now, just imagine SAS as a really, really powerful tool for CSS. You can do complex things there. You can create your column apps. You can, you can create powerful functions. You can create ready to use components in CSS by using SAS, of course. Now, after you've done this, there's an unskippable step, which is to learn Git and GitHub. So Git is, learn the basics, first of all, of Git. There's not much to learn. Learn about version control, why it's important, and understand the base of the Git commands, which are init, clone, commit, push, pull, branch, and manage. If you have that covered, move on to practicing using Git by creating a couple of repositories and pushing and pulling from them in GitHub. Learn GitHub. GitHub is extremely important, especially when you're working in a team. Also, as a freelancer working solo, you have to, you're constantly on the move, so you're going to have one laptop, and then your repositories will be on the internet on GitHub and you can have access to them all over the world. Now, there's a step which most, most would suggest it is skippable, but I would suggest it's not skippable. Before dipping your toes into any kind of framework, you just should go deeper into JavaScript. And that's a really important reason why you should go deeper into JavaScript. That is because sooner or later, you're going to be overwhelmed if you just start with the framework. Frameworks constantly change and having deeper knowledge of JavaScript, you will understand and manage those changes much more quicker. So advanced JavaScript concepts, learn about them. Learn about ES6 modules, learn about error functions, learn about destructuring, learn about temporary literals, spread and rest operators. Understand asynchronous JavaScript with callback functions, with promises, async and await. Also learn about the document object models and the event handlers, some more advanced event handlers, APIs and AJAX. Learn about 
how to interact with RESTful APIs using the fetch request or Axios. And also learn about JSON data types because they're the most basic data types and you cannot live without them. Now from here, you would have, I would say three choices. There are much more frameworks out there, but I will stick with these three. So you have your React, you have your Angular, and you have your Vue.js. And this is now a personal recommendation for me. I am sticking with React. Why? Because it's more future-proof. Vue is a bit more simpler. Angular is the more complex one. Also going to come back to this when we're going to talk about jobs, job searching. So Angular is extremely powerful, but it's overpowered. Vue is underpowered. React is just there where it should be. React is actually a library. It's not a framework. Now, if you're going to go with React, I would suggest that you start by learning the basics of React components, props, state, JSX, understand the component lifecycle, and also hooks. Learn about routing in React by using React Router. Other frameworks and libraries, as I said, are optional. Explore them. Dip your toes in them. I'm not saying that you shouldn't learn Angular or you shouldn't learn Vue, but also understand that only one of them will get you and keep your job. Okay. So let's move a bit away from frameworks and see what you can do in order to get better and better and better. One of them is to build projects. Now projects are either personal or you're helping up someone with a project. You could, if you don't have any kind of project ideas, I'm just going to drop a couple of them for you. So you're going to uh, try to build a personal blog website, create a simple to-do list. I have YouTube videos for all of them. Everything what I'm, what I'm saying here, I got YouTube videos on them. Uh, develop a weather application using the API, create a blog or a small e-commerce site. Also start and deploy those projects on websites like GitHub Pages, Netlify, Oversell. Now, if you want to grab a couple of projects that are already ready and just start to understand them, then you can try out my 30 HTML, CSS, and JavaScript projects course for total beginners. Then a bit more advanced will be the 10 HTML, CSS, and JavaScript web application where we're building extremely powerful financial web applications. Also, if you want to try out then React, I get, I have 30 React projects that you can try out. Now, all of them are down in the video description. Also, if not, then just go with the YouTube videos. By doing this, building projects, you're inevitably going to look around for tooling and optimization. So try, start building tools, learn about package managers like NPM and Yarn, understand module bundling like Webpack and Vite. Vite is extremely powerful. I'm constantly using Vite with React. Explore test runners like Gulp. Learn about optimizing Webpack performance with uh, minifications, image optimization, lazy loading. I have excellent videos on all of them and understand the importance of SEO accessibility. Now, by doing these two, you're actually going to do a very important thing, which you should do to, till the end of time, so to the end of your career, which is to continue learning and stay up to date with the latest and greatest. How you can do that via by following front and web developers, following the podcast, following the YouTube channels like mine, practice in coding challenges and contribute to open source projects, stay up to date with the latest trends and best practices in web development, of course. Now. Let's move a bit away from this and go to why you're doing this is for money. So you can either freelance or get a job. Both of them viable choices. It actually depends on your character. I'm more a freelancer. I can work for, for someone in this domain. I have my problems. So freelancing, this is why GitHub is important. GitHub will help you just take your work anywhere, but this is where all of this comes into play. What should you know in order to freelance? Well, all of this. What should you know for a job? One, one framework. That's all you need. For freelancing, you have to know everything. Why? Because you're more competitive that way. You, can, you have better pricing power that way. And you're also going to, when, when there are less jobs, you can take any job you want. So that's for freelancing. It has its pros and cons, money fluctuations. <laughs> When there are jobs and when you have jobs, then you have jobs. When you have a job, then you have a job. You're going to get your salary at the end of the month. Okay, now when you're applying for a job, I have one great suggestion. Go backwards. So don't just start learning this, but start by looking for a job, deciding on do I want to move or not? And then look around. If you don't want to move, look around in your area. What do they need? If they need a React front-end web developer, don't start learning Angular and Vue. Make it as a secondary thing after you're, after you're an expert in React, for example. If you want to move, then you can look around for all three of them. If someone wants, if 
key and positioning is more important to you then you can learn whatever framework you want if you're asking for angular then you should learn angular if you're asking for view then you should learn view now after you kind of mastered one of them then you can dip your toes in the other ones why because it's going to just broaden your understanding of your framework that you're actually a master in. so yeah that's basically the roadmap you're going to see more complex roadmaps uh oh yeah one next thing so after you have these the frameworks go back and play around integrating for example bootstrap and tailwind CSS or sas or less in your frameworks that's pretty cool you're going to speed up your development process uh now that's it there are more complex roadmaps up there the roadmap is down in the video description you just now download it also the entire thing is going to be on my blog post uh thank you so much for watching like share and subscribe also click that notification bell in order to get notified whenever i post new videos like this with this being said, I'm Norbert PM. I teach web development. Catch you next time. Bye-bye.